One issue with the property is that we don't have any water or electric for that matter on the property. So watering animals and bathing animals can be a real conundrum. So Davis scored some 55 gallon, 55 gallon drums? Yes, 55 gallon. 55 gallon drums. And we are gonna convert them into what most people would use is as a rain barrel, but we're gonna put spigots on them and then we can hook hoses up and do gravity fed water or bather or water containment system that we can use to make our lives a little bit easier. Livestock only. Yes. This water would not be for human consumption. No human consumption. So we have so for this we're gonna do two. So you need two 55 gallon drums or whatever size drums that you need. Yeah, this is just the basic basically how to install a spigot on anything really. Yeah. Um, any kind of drum. It could be a metal drum, plastic drum, wood drum if you want, no matter. Also, all of these uh, different parts and lists and things, I will drop um, a list and links in, in the description below for if you guys want to get these parts and make your own. What is that, babe? What is that, babe? What is that? <laughs> Here's the water on the inside. If it's being used for, like, um, I guess washing produce, you, you, would, you would want to have a fruit food grade. If you can get food grade, that's I, And the better. thing about the barrels too is a lot of people you don't want to buy, if you don't want to buy brand new you don't have to, but you want to make sure that the labels are on the barrel so you know what product was inside that barrel. Um, the guy that I bought these barrels from, he was selling them only $7 a piece so I jumped right on it. These only had some teak dip, uh, just a sanitizing dip for teats. Um, iodine. I, yeah, the, the main component was iodine and uh, some other organic stuff. Uh, and the pH balance was 5.5, so we rinsed them out with some dish soap and uh, got some white. We're gonna get some white vinegar in there later to kind of dilute it even more to kind of try to get the smell out. Uh, but these barrels were made in 2018, so the teak dip wasn't in the barrels for no more than two, three months before they were emptied out. Uh, so we didn't have to worry about the chemicals leaching into the plastic, and we don't have to worry about the chemicals leaching back out of the plastic once we start storing water into it. Uh, so if you are looking for water for personal consumption for your family, if you're looking for storage, I recommend really researching the type of product that was inside the barrel making sure that uh, if it does have any chemicals that they leach into the water, they won't harm you or just buy brand new food grade. Yeah, food, food grade. So as you can see on the bottom of the bucket, uh, you got this handle part right here, which will, will allow you to uh, pick up the barrel and dump out anything. So we don't want to put the spigot right there. Um, so it's actually another possible place would be here. That way uh, the barrel can be picked up and anything that's residual in there can be dumped out there to spick it. So we're probably just going to put it right here. That way whenever you're dumping, um, you just have to take your cap off. You know, these things don't hold themselves on that tight. You don't need them that tight. Uh, they come right off and then you open that up. That way you get some airflow. That way you don't uh, vacuum your barrel and suck in the sides of it and have a major problem with your barrel down the road. We're going to leave this one open so that we can work under here and uh, that's about it. In order to line it up you just follow your center line, your fuse line right here in the middle. Um, so what we're going to use to connect everything is we got two different fittings. You got your, your regular spigot. Um, I chose this one because the spigots are going to be used with the hose attached to them. Uh, this will allow the hose to easily be fed off of it and I have to worry about catching the spigot on anything as we're moving the barrels around. Uh, I also chose a brass fitting because these barrels are going to be 
uh, pushed around, shoved around, and they're going to be seeing some uh, abuse. So I wanted to get a quality product that would last the abuse. Um, if you're doing something with the barrel that, that stays in one place, you know, you, there, there's lots of other cheaper options as far as where the spigot goes. Um, I bought these at Home Depot. I also bought these all at Home Depot. Uh, you can buy them at your local hardware stores. The other fitting we got here is a bolt kit fitting. Um, what you're going to find usually, you're going to find these with either one or two washers. Your other washer is this neoprene washer right here. Um, a lot of times, most of the time, you'll find them with two washers. If you find them with just one washer, that's that's fine as well because the clamping ring acts as its own washer in a sense. Um, so basically, this goes on the inside, and you're gonna feed it through your hole. Then you're gonna put your washer on there, and then you're gonna tighten your ring down, and that's gonna clamp it in there. Then you're gonna take your spigot, and you're gonna screw it right into the front, tighten it down, and that's it. Connect your hose, turn your water on, good to go. Alright, so the best way to put your hole in the side of the barrel would be to use a standard hole saw bit, but I didn't want to buy a hole saw bit, those are like 10 bucks, 5 to 10 bucks depending on where you buy it, but I didn't want to buy one for the sole purpose of drilling these two holes. Uh, so a long time ago, uh, Tiffany bought me these uh, paddle bits and I've never got around to using them for anything, so I figured why not. It's not an exact size, but it'll get me pretty close. And from there, I think if I take my razor knife, I could uh, trim it up. Um, this thing's so rusted, I don't even know what size it is anymore. <laughs> but the great thing about these is there is plenty of room for error. You don't have to have it be well, the you exact don't, same. I mean, it's not plenty of room, but you do get, I mean, you get the size of the washer um, on the back side and the front side. So you get maybe about quarter inch to half an inch on each side of the, the hole that you can play with. Yeah, so if you cut it just a tiny, tiny bit too um, big. And the cuts don't have to be perfect either because it's going to be for farm use and we don't care about perfect for farm use, right? <laughs> uh, and another We option, do care about pretty though. Uh, another option, um, in case you guys don't have a paddle bit like that, would be to use a standard drill bit. Um, I just use this one just so it's a bigger size. If you have small ones, that's fine too. What you can do is once you trace out your hole, and uh, this will be something we'll show you. Trace out your hole and then you use a drill bit, drill around it, take a razor knife, and then you can cut out your hole that way. Uh, it takes a little bit longer, a little bit more stressful, a little bit harder work, but it saves you a little bit of money and that's what matters. Do you agree, Nuna? Do you agree? <laughs> so another thing about the fitting is where you're going to attach it. So let's go ahead and take these two washers off and set them down over there. Um, if you do get your neoprene washer out, you know, it has actually a slot that you set it into. Uh, make sure that it sets back into a slot. Um, so one thing you got to worry about is the curve curvature of the barrel itself so when if you put your hole directly on the bottom you're not going to be able to get this thing lined up so the main thing you need to worry about is where those curves are going to be at you're never going to be able to drain this 100% through the spigot without tipping it over a little bit um, so you always want to make sure that you line it up good and you get the hole exactly where you want it I don't even know if this is going to mark but we're going to hope for the best I'm gonna scratch it a little bit, so it's all right. So, like I said, it don't have to be perfect. It don't have to be in any particular spot. You just don't want it too low, to where the curvature of the barrel interferes with the sides of the bulkhead fitting. So now we're just going to simply find our mark here. We're gonna line this up to where the hole goes right where we want it. I'm not sure how well this is going to work on plastic. This is a wood bit. I've never used it on plastic, so we're all learning something here. It works pretty good. Makes a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. We're going to wash this out a couple times so that we get all this plastic out of here. We'll come over here with a rake and break this up later. 
Um, now the main thing is to see if that did fit, which I don't think it did. See, as you can see, we're not going to be able to fit that through. But what we can do is center this up right here. And then take our pen again and kind of get a general idea how far around we need to go. And these barrels are kind of thick, so if you're using a razor knife, please be careful. Like I said, I'm not sure how well this razor knife is even going to cut. Mm, yeah, it's trying to go deep. So what we might need to do is cut some little slices in it like this. Now, could we try and take the regular drill bit and do just kind of run, run it around the rim? Would that work? Uh, not, not as well as wood. Okay. I don't think. I mean, we could, could try. Worth a shot. Worth a shot. Learn from our experimentation. Like I said, you just cut the little, little slits like I was doing. Yeah. Uh, as deep as you want to go. And then it makes trimming this off a little bit easier as well. I had a little ways to go. You know what, babe? I was just thinking. How? Oh, is that why is you that, had the string? Is that going to be my handy dandy trick I'm going to show you? <laughs> I was just thinking, how? We only have, this does not have a lid. So that, if, if you can get 55 gallon drums with lids, that will save you some trouble. But Davis has an idea. This is all about saving money. So, like I said, if you had a, if you took this while you're at the hardware store, matched it up with the whole saw bit, you'd already be done with this. But we want to save money. We won't want to buy a whole saw bit that is going to be technically useless to us at some point. Um, so now we got our hole. What we're going to do is take a string, tie a weight to it. Anything would work. I picked this uh, nut right here. Make sure that it'll fit through the hole. What you're gonna do is angle this thing down and you're gonna feed your weight down into the bottom. Until it comes out your hole. And then get your handy dandy assistant to pull it through. So now that we have that done, you can just put that down. Now that we have that done, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take our bulkhead fitting got a little beast hanging around with us. We're gonna take a bulkhead fitting. Ooh, ooh, baby. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's all right. Take bulkhead, hold, hold on your string down here, and you're gonna feed the bulkhead in here, like that. And then you're gonna reach through, and your string is to keep your fitting where you want it. Snap. And you pull that through right there. Oh snap! So now that you got that, don't take your string out until you get your washers on there. So I got a bee floating around my ears, making it hard to concentrate. <laughs> is he? Where is it? I don't uh, see he's it. floating in and out, messing with me. Uh. I, I heard him whisper in my ear, "Your time is now." <laughs> <laughs> so what I like to do is go ahead and just put your finger inside here that'll help you hold that fitting tight to where you can screw this on and remember these are screwed on opposite of regular nuts and washers you're gonna screw this counterclockwise to tighten so we don't want to tighten this down completely until we have the spigot placed straight upwards and downwards right um, like tighten it down just a little well, bit. Well, once, once you get your spigot on here, you can loosen this, adjust it to where you want it, and then tighten it back down. Okay. 
That way your spigot goes where facing downwards because you go, you want to get your spigot in there as tight as possible. Um, so now that we got our bulkhead fitting on there, <laughs> that was so easy. Is, uh, <laughs> we're was... gonna take this right here and make sure that we tighten this thing down as well. I might need a bigger, bigger wrench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna need a bigger wrench for that. But you should be able to get most of the way. Hand tighten for now Just should be enough. Tight. Yeah, till we get this put on and then. And we'll see if hand tight even works. I mean, doing a hand tight might even be enough. Yeah, because it might pressurize once. Once the water pressure goes in there, my uh, channel locks just aren't big enough to go all the way around. And it is plastic, so. There we go, I can twist it this way. Do we want to tighten it all the way down? Well, I want to get it tightened in there so that when we put our handy dandy spigot on there. Oh, it doesn't spin. It doesn't spin, exactly. Alright, so just go ahead and take the string out now. Um, oh, yes. there he is. Ooh, found him. Yes, the string can now be pulled through. That was awesome. Quick, easy, no headaches. No trying to um, squeeze your hand into the tiny so slot. So, anytime you're doing a water line. And especially with something that's going to have all this pressure, you're going to want to keep anything from leaking. So it installs a little bit of thread tape to solve any future troubles. One, two, three around, and you're good to go. Break it off, and that's it. Um, another thing is wrap your thread tape in the direction that you're spinning it so you don't unwind your thread tape as you're spinning in there. I don't think I followed my own advice. <laughs> We're all right. Because this actually spins in pretty easy. We're gonna turn this back. And we're gonna tighten the bad boy down. And once you get about hand tight, you can adjust from there if you got a little bit of playroom. And that puts me exactly where I want it. And we're good to go. Yay. We have a spigot. But for now, we're gonna take the spigot off so that we can rinse this out and get all the plastic little pieces out so that our horses and cattle aren't drinking plastic. Another thing you can do with these bulkhead fittings if you guys are actually making rain barrels for yourself, um, if you wanna make a stacking system, say you got your next barrel right here and then as that barrel fills, it fills up this barrel as well. Um, another thing you can do in with the bulkhead is get a PVC attachment that'll screw into there. That way you can attach a PVC pipe or you can even do it with a spigot. I think that'll be a little bit more expensive than what you need. Um, you can just put a PVC pipe with a cutoff valve. It'd uh, be pretty cheap. Um, even if you didn't want to put a cutoff valve, it'll just make uh, connecting and, and uh, filtering like, your water as yeah. necessary. Uh, there's lots of options, but that bulkhead fitting is the fitting you need if you want to put a any kind of attachment uh, as far as water lines go for your 55 gallon barrels. And like I said, these can also work with metal. If you are going to do it with the metal one, uh, I do recommend you spend the money and get a metal hole saw bit for that. That would make your life a uh, hundred times easier. I don't even know if that is possible for, for you to cut it. You would have to use a grinder with a very small blade. Here's my buddy. Oh, he Ooh. fell off again. Oh, he's on your back. Oh, he's Where's he at? Bite. My buddy. My ah, don't, don't, don't get away from me. <laughs> and that concludes our project. Now we're going to do the same thing to our other barrel so that we can take these out to our pasture, fill up our uh, water troughs, and uh, possibly bathe ponies as we need. Yay, clean ponies. Bathe calves as we need. Um, that gives us 110 gallons and uh, eventually you know we might move on to buying more barrels uh, all depends on when we plan on moving out to our pasture and actually getting water run out there get off me it's <laughs> wet my mouth Ooh. laying on my lips <laughs> that, that creepy feeling <laughs> um, and that's it all right so uh, if you like the project, uh, if you have any different things that you might have done differently, any advice, uh, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, please hit the subscribe, and hit the little bell. Happy homesteading! Yeah.